Today in front of us, we have the Xiaomi 12 Pro, a flagship that has about the same price and specs as the OnePlus 10 Pro. May it rest in peace. While the OnePlus 10 Pro might not have survived my durability test, today we're gonna find out if the 12 Pro from Xiaomi is worth your hard-earned money. Speaking of money, I've met several people throughout my life who have a head-in-the-sand approach to their bank account. Like, maybe if we don't look at it, all of the problems will solve themselves, which just isn't the case. You can't grow your financials without understanding your finances, which is where Truebill comes in. Huge thanks to Truebill for sponsoring this video. Truebill empowers its members to achieve their financial goals by canceling subscriptions, lowering bills, setting budgets, and providing one singular location where they can view all of their finances. A big picture of what's going on. And a crazy thing Truebill can do is actually negotiate with your providers to get you lower bills, and they have a surprising 85% success rate. You can monitor your credit score, set budgets, and even start a savings account that you can withdraw from whenever you need to, along with viewing all of your payment history so you can cancel those subscriptions that you're not using anymore. Truebill does not sell your information to third parties, and they have the same security protocol that banks do that keep all of your information encrypted. My favorite thing out of all of those, though, is the ability to cancel subscriptions you're not using right there from the app makes it super simple and easy. If you want to save money or learn more, you can get started today at truebill.com slash jerryrig. Or click the link down in the description, and thanks to Truebill for sponsoring this video. Now it's time to cross our fingers and hope that the Xiaomi 12 Pro is a little more structurally sound than the OnePlus 10 Pro. Let's get started. Xiaomi has again released several variants of this phone, but left the name the same. In this case, we have the Xiaomi 12X, then the 12, then the 12 Pro, which is this one, and finally the fourth Xiaomi 12 device called the Ultra that comes out in the next few months. It does get confusing. The Ultra might look a little different, but at least the other three 12s are visibly and structurally the same, so this durability test could count for the whole lineup. Inside the box, we do get a transparent rubber case, which is nice. Any protection is good protection. A huge perk of this phone is that it also comes with a 120-watt charger inside the box. This is massive amounts of power for a cell phone, and can theoretically charge from 0 to 100% in just 18 minutes. If you forget to plug your phone in at night, you could still wake up in the morning and get a full charge by the time you're done eating breakfast. I thought the charging animation would be a bit cooler, but maybe we just have to wait for it to turn on. Other than the charging thing though, I think this is a pretty normal, everyday rectangular smartphone. Let's start with the scratch test. I have a set of Mohs mineral picks that can tell the difference between different materials, and since this smartphone is in the $900 realm, we would expect it to not be made of plastic. The included screen protector, however, is indeed allowed to be. With that gone, we can continue up the scale. Until we see scratches at a level 6, with deeper grooves at a level 7. The Xiaomi 12 Pro is using Gorilla Glass Victus. This same Victus glass is also protecting the front-facing camera as well which is 32 megapixels and capable of filming in 1080p. We also have a tiny ear slit up here at the top. This is just for the earpiece, as the upper stereo loudspeaker has a much larger vent out the top. The sides of the phone are made from aluminum. We have dual antenna lines placed in the upper and lower thirds of the phone. Antenna lines have been known to cause structural issues in the past. The power button and volume rocker are both made from metal and are not popping out like we see on the Samsung devices. The top of the phone has some Harman Kardon branding, along with the microphone hole, IR blaster, and the vent for the upper loudspeaker that we talked about earlier. The left side of the phone is pretty uneventful. Down at the bottom, however, we do have the lower loudspeaker vent, the 120 watt USB-C charging port, along with the SIM card tray that does not have removable storage. 
And while this tray does have a rubber ring for water resistance, the phone itself does not come with an IP rating. The back glass of the Xiaomi 12 Pro is frosted, meaning that it has more of a satin feel instead of the smooth glass that we normally see on smartphones. And due to this microscopic texturing, the level 6 glass is acting like sandpaper to my level 5 razor blades. The 12 Pro has three cameras in the top corner. All of them are 50 megapixels. The large sensor is the one up top, then a telephoto in the center, a dual tone flash, and then a wide angle camera down at the bottom. The trifecta of perspectives. The lenses are covered with glass, but the hump itself is made from metal. The Xiaomi logo down at the bottom is just a blend of the etched glass and smooth glass texturing. It's actually kind of interesting how they make the etching on this glass. You can actually buy off the shelf glass etching cream at hobby shops or on Amazon for like 20 bucks. It's a type of sulfuric acid and sodium biofluoride combo that resembles toothpaste. Except for that if you brush your teeth with it, you'll die. It can, however, create the type of frosted surface by eating away at the glass layer before it gets cleaned off. Let me know if you think we should buy some and try it on a phone sometime. A little hobby project with Jerry, if you will. As far as the flame goes, on the 6.7 inch 1440p 120Hz display, the pixels lasted about 30 seconds before turning white and then remaining permanently damaged. The 12 Pro also does that thing where it can reduce the refresh rate down to 1Hz to conserve battery life. And of course, now that the phone is on, we can get a good look at what the charging animation is like when it's plugged in. And to be honest, this 120 watts is pretty mind blowing. Visibly being able to see the battery percentage tick up is a pretty phenomenal advance from where battery technology used to be just a few years ago. Finally, we have the underscreen fingerprint scanner. I'll set my fingerprint real quick to make sure it's all readable. Then we can score the surface of the glass with excessive level 7 deeper grooves, more than the phone would ever see during its natural existence. Unless, of course, it was owned by Edward Scissorhands. But good news for Edward, though, is that the fingerprint scanner works just fine, even with the extra scratches. Now for the bin test. This is the structural assessment that every major phone has had to pass through for the last seven years. Bending from the front, we do see some minor flex in the frame and the back panel, but luckily none of the stress or flex is focused on the antenna lines that are off to either end. Smart placement by Xiaomi. Flipping the 12 Pro over, there is a loud popping sound, which scared me for a second, but the phone appears to still be working and in one piece. The repeatable popping sound is something coming from inside, moving out of position, I assume, but then the phone locks out, preventing any physical damage to the device. It'll be interesting to find out where that popping sound is coming from during the teardown. It is scary sounding, yes, but it also is still in one piece, so not too shabby. Nice work, Xiaomi. Your phones haven't always made it, but this 12 Pro has indeed survived. Let me know what phone you want to see tested next down in the comments. Come hang out with me on Instagram and Elon's Twitter. And thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you around.